So I think that we all as outboard owners have learned or have yet to learn this one key truth about boating, and that is that stuff is eventually going to go sideways on you out there on the water. And I don't say this to intimidate you, but it's just a fact of the matter that, you know, boats and engines are complex pieces of equipment with tons of things that help them function. And some of that eventually can go wrong. And so in today's video, we're gonna walk you through some of the necessary, you know, legal things you must keep in your boat to stay safe, some of the helpful pieces of equipment that will help you get back on the water fast. And of course, we're gonna go on the water and show you guys some of the few things that are very common when it comes to things breaking down on the water and how you guys can fix those to get back out there on the water quickly. My name is Tyler and welcome to Yamaha Boating Academy. So as y'all can probably see, I have quite a few things here on my boat deck that we're gonna talk about both legally necessary to have in your boat as well as just some helpful things to have in case stuff goes wrong. And the first of which being legally. So in this category, we have a fire extinguisher. You're gonna need a fire extinguisher that is up to date. Make sure you check it every year. And one that is ABC. What that stands for is every type of fire out there, oil, electrical, gas, uh, this fire extinguisher will put out those fires. So legally required to have a fire extinguisher. Second is a whistle. Luckily, I've never had to use this whistle, or I guess a whistle or a horn, but the horn on my boat is tied to the batteries, and we're gonna talk about having battery issues later, which you can't always rely on the horn, so you gotta have a whistle as well. However many people you plan on having in your boat that day, that's how many PFDs and life jackets you need inside your boat. And lastly, to be legally out there on the water, you gotta have a throwable cushion right here in case somebody falls out. Uh, you can throw this thing to them. That is not a life jacket, it is a throwable flotation device. So that's all the legally necessary stuff. Now let's talk about some of you know a broader category, the helpful things for you out there on the water. The first thing in this list that I wanna talk about is going to be a first aid kit. No matter what goes wrong out there on the water, anybody gets injured or hurt at any capacity, a first aid kit, just a super simple one, is very helpful to have on the boat. Second of which being a toolbox. This toolbox here that I've had in my boat for several years now has every wrench and screwdriver necessary for every piece on my boat. I've been building this over the last few years, uh, and of course it fits for everything that I need specifically. It might be a little bit different for you. I've got zip ties, I've got an Allen wrench, regular wrench, knife, duct tape, super glue, extra batteries, AA, AAA, lots of things you could potentially need to fix stuff or, or just you know bandage things up to get back to the ramp. That's going to be in this toolbox. Next is going to be multiple styles and lengths of rope. I don't care if you're towing somebody in or just something goes wrong out there, you need to tie up to the dock, you need rope inside your boat. So I've got two thicker, longer ropes here and two thinner, shorter ropes right here. Next of which is going to be a phone charger. Whatever phone you have, bring an extra you know, cable and cord, leave it here in your boat at all times, as well as whatever attachment you need to draw power. So if you have a USB plug in your boat, all you need is a cable, but if you do not and you have a cigarette lighter, make sure you have a functioning cigarette lighter attachment as well. Next, you're going to have some things that you might not think about keeping in the boat, but you think, I'll just bring it with me. Trust me, you won't, you're gonna forget. Sunscreen, I always keep a bottle of sunscreen in the boat, no matter where I am or what time of the year it is. I always bring a jacket in my boat and keep it here, no matter what time of the year it is, because you can get stuck out there, it can become cold, a jacket is always helpful to have. Next is going to be trail mix. I always keep trail mix, granola bars, something that is very much, you know, if perishable eventually, it takes a long time to get there and trail mix is one of those things just to keep in your boat for a snack in case you get hungry and you're stuck out there for a long time, as well as a few bottles of water that I replace throughout the year uh, if they do start to get too old. And the last of these, you know, helpful things to have on the boat is going to be jumper cables. Now you may think, Tyler, why the heck would I need jumper cables in my boat? One of the big, biggest problems out here on the water that will cause you to break down when you are boating is going to be battery issues and having these can absolutely save your day. So I say we put this boat on the water and show you guys some of the most common things that can cause you to break down and how to fix them to get back to boating. So the first thing you wanna check back here in this very important battery compartment is going to be your loose connections. This here is the main cranking battery, and so the positive and negative could have either a loose bolt, some sort of loose connection here, and if you can't get your engine to start or something's not working electrical-wise, you wanna make sure that you're, you're checking to see if everything is kinda of tight on the battery, and in my case, it is. Now, of course, nothing's actually broken today, but that is the first thing that you wanna check. 
the second of which being your breakers and your fuses. Uh, those are both important for making proper electrical connections. So back here we have two breakers for my fish finders at my dash. I've got one breaker over here for my trolling motor and your boat might have different breakers. Your engine might have different breakers and fuses. You wanna make sure you know where all of those are because when it comes to everything properly functioning, it needs electricity to get to it and that breaker or, or fuse being blown or tripped can cause that to not happen. So I do have a few fuses down here next to my Perco switch and I've got a fuse box underneath my console. Again, those are the first things you wanna check before getting to this last point, which is jumping your main battery. It's possible that your battery didn't charge enough or your battery is just totally dead out there in the water. And by jumping it, you can get your engine started again to get back to the ramp safely. And so that's where you bring in your jumper cables. So if you properly connect from your uh, cranking battery to an accessory battery, such as my trolling motors, or to another boat via positive to positive, negative to negative, giving it a few minutes to rest, and then starting it up, you will be able to get yourself out of trouble and back to the ramp. And if none of those steps end up working and you are stuck out on the water, you wanna make sure that you have your insurance policy number as well as the tow service that is provided with your insurance on the boat with you. That way, if you have to get towed in, you've got nobody around you that can tow you in, you're not struggling with your phone to try to find you know, the, the, the tow number and you don't know your policy number when they call you. And so you wanna make sure you have all of that on a small card like I do here in my boat. My name's Tyler, and we'll see you guys next time right here on Yamaha Boating Academy.